Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Hertz Traffic at Trade Group, and it is Tuesday, June 9th. So a little bit of a, of a breather uh, for the major indices today, although not so much for the queues. The queues were strong and um, you know, continue to break out. Um, NDX hit, what, 10,000 or something today? Uh, so we'll, we'll go over that in just a minute. We'll talk a little bit about now what I think everybody is talking about, which is that Powell uh, speaks tomorrow, right? We've got FOMC. Uh, for tomorrow. So the Fed is meeting for their um, interest rate meeting. Now, again, I don't really think um, that they're going to do anything with interest rates. Uh, really, what everybody is going to be keyed on is whether or not the Fed is going to continue with their stimulus, right? And basically, take away the punch bowl or not, right? Because the market is continuing to rally. There's a lot of call it what you will. There's a lot of animal spirits in the market right now uh, because the Fed is, you know, basically just pumping money into the system and um, that is making you know uh, capital flow very freely right now so that's what we have going on and I think that's going to be the main story for that we're going to be hooked on for for this week is what Powell says uh, I think if you're so let's talk about this for a minute before we go into all the numbers and so forth might as well talk about this first but you know I think you want to think of think about this in, in a, from a few different different scenarios, and then I'll talk about something probably that you may not be thinking about. But um, you know, the shorter that Powell speaks, usually the better. Uh, I'm sure he's going to get some questions about the stock market and what's been going on there. So that's really the question: is if he really comes out and says anything that. He, he, that they're looking at changing the tone of what they've been doing the last couple of months. That should cause some, I would think that would, should cause some volatility in the market. Okay, so that's, now if he just basically says, hey, we're in the wait and see, and we're going to see how this progresses, then, you know, nothing really will probably change too much. But I, I don't think we're, my opinion, now I don't know what he's going to say, I don't have a crystal ball, but I would err on the conservative side. You know, I think after a move like we've had, I think the, the market is being is pretty close to being priced to perfection. So the and then the other thing is that you want to think about too is not just what Powell says. Remember, I I know that like the Robin Hood traders are getting all this attention, but it's really the institutions that drive the market. When they sell, the market's going to go down. When they buy, the market goes up. So if they have a lot of gains. And they're a little bit worried about what Powell will say. And I think, you know, maybe that's why we were down a little bit today. The um, S&P was basically the inverse of what the Qs did today, down 70 basis points. And the Qs um, had a real nice day today, although I think they, they closed a little bit off their highs. And then small caps were um, were weak again this, uh, today, down one point. I don't want to say again, but it just seems like. You know, maybe they they've hit a little bit of resistance and and uh, down 1.7 percent for the day. And the VIX, as you can see, was up uh, 5.8 percent today. Again, that's the second day in a row that the VIX has been up. Um, so I think that's maybe associated with you know a little bit of the Powell jitters. But again, you really you have to think about not just what Powell is going to say, but what what the institutions are going to do. And the way I framed it earlier in the room was that. You know, think of, think about what, um, you know, if people are going to start taking profits. If big institutions, right, if they've bought into all this, you know, somewhere in here, I'm not going to try to say what, what, what fund because they're all different. But um, at this point, or if you look at the queues, it's probably a, a little bit logical to say that they're going to be into an event when the market Again, I think the market is priced for perfection. We really haven't had any any negative news, anything bad, and um, so if they take away that punch bowl, uh, they're they're controlling the market as as well as by by you know inserting liquidity into the system. Where's my balance sheet uh, chart? Might as well bring that thing up. Uh, if we do Fed balance sheet, ah, here it is. All right, so this is the expansion of the Fed's balance sheet, which is absolutely crazy to look at. So if they decide to bring this in a little bit, what do you think is going to happen? 
right? So forget about all that nonsense that you're hearing on the financial uh, financial media about Robin Hood. I mean, there's a lot of speculation going on in the market. And, you know, small traders, retail traders are, are just following what's going on in the market. But they are not the ones that are that are controlling the market. It's the institution and it's what the Fed decides to do. And if the Fed changes its stance, you're going to find out real quickly that small traders do not control the market. So that's, um, you know, so do I want this? So here's what I said earlier. Uh, do I want this market to continue to go higher? You know, even though we've been running in a basically a straight line. Um, sure. We've been doing, I've been doing very well. We've been, you know, everybody's been doing pretty well, I think, in the trading room. Um, and with, you know, finding, you know, we're finding a lot of different trade ideas and, and a lot of trading opportunities. But um, here's what I said. If, if Powell says anything, right, the risk is to the downside. So manage, control what you can control. I saw, I saw someone else uh, tweet out, I was some, somebody from uh, political stuff saying, oh, this isn't going to end well with all this speculation. It never ends well. Um, <laughs> so, um, yes, you've been, people have been saying that for like 20 years. Oh, this isn't going to end well. well. Yes, of course, things are not going to end well. But you don't have to like just ride the roller coaster up and down. You can you control the ride by basically managing your risk. So at this point, right, if the market decides to go down today and spill a little bit, which again, I don't know that's going to happen, but I'm just trying to come up with a little bit of a scenario analysis. There's no excuse for you losing money tomorrow or, you know, losing a big chunk of change. I will have some trades on. I, you know, I'm not going to completely, uh, you know, make my, my trading account flat. Um, my trading book flat. I will have some trades on, but I'm, but my exposure will be less than what it was, you know, earlier in the week, as well as last week. Um, this is logical. It's just trading. So uh, the the whole it's going to end badly. That doesn't mean it ends badly for you. You could lock in profits anytime you want to. So don't let it. The, you know, these idiots on. Um, on Twitter, you know, tell you something differently about, oh, this is going to, you know, you can manage your, you have the control to manage your account. You do it any way you want to. Okay, so that's, uh, that's that. Um, option activity, you know, again, a pretty blistering pace, you know, some of the names that we talked about in the weekend. And by the way, what we will do tomorrow is, uh, you know, we, we have member Q&A Monday and Wednesday. So that will fall perfectly for tomorrow before the Fed. So if anybody has any questions about that, we'll, um, we'll, we'll open up the room tomorrow at one o'clock and have a Q&A discussion. And then I also wanted to talk about like one of the topics that I see a lot of traders who have a lot of questions about, and that's like letting your profits roll. So I'll talk a little bit about that. There's definitely techniques to improve upon for that type of thing. You know, I did that today for, for a couple trades. You know, Microsoft was a nice trade for me. Um, you know, this is something that we, that we lined up. I, I think this is plenty. Well, I don't want to say plenty because I don't know. But I'm still long, and, and what I basically do is just manage around the trade a little bit. So I was able to take this trade, if we go over to the trades channel. So how do I manage this, for example? Well, I took off the September 195 calls that I put on on Friday and then added to and a little bit of weakness, I believe, on just yesterday. I believe on Monday morning. Uh, it was a little bit less than the price that I had gotten on Friday. But... Um, you know, and then rolling out to, to September 200 calls. By doing that, by default, I'm lowering my exposure a little bit, <clears throat> but I still have some exposure to the stock if it wants to rally. We did that in AMD today. AMD was another watch list name from the, from the weekend. You just kind of knew that eventually, just like we talked about yesterday with Tesla, uh, that AMD was going to get going. It's one of those names that the momentum call buyers love. And I put that out on uh, on my public Twitter this weekend. So watch this AMD this week. It's going to probably break the right way. And um, sure enough, you know, it doesn't do anything for basically a week and a half, two weeks. And then all of a sudden it goes up 6.5%. So this was a name that um, first, what, you know, what did I do? I day traded. 
and um, I just went into some June calls. You know, and even like I had to chase this name. I think AMD was up maybe like a percent or something like that. But you have to realize, look, you know, and this is why we do our homework. Because you know that AMD has done nothing for a week and a half. So if they start piling into this name with all kinds of short-term options, it's got a little bit of legs that it could run because it's done nothing. So again, that's all part of the game in terms of being prepared and knowing what these charts look like in advance. So when I see call activity, I'm not busy trying to fumble around and look at the chart. I know this thing hasn't done anything in a while. So um, that's basically why I, I went into this name and got out of some calls. Uh, I rolled them. So again, doing the same type of principle here, you know, taking my profits because I'm, I am worried whenever I'm in short term calls that immediately of like if the stock happens to sell off for a reason, boom, those profits are, are gone. So what do I do? I get out of the June calls and then I roll them into July. And from there, you know, then AMD kind of slowed down a little bit. I still was able to take some some uh, some targets, and um, I think I, I hit one target at three bucks, and I took this thing off two ninety versus two sixty. And then what I decided to do because it did break value, you got a big green bar again. If you're looking to establish a swing trade, uh, you know today was a day trade. But I like to wait till the end of the day because we have the most information. And you could see that you got a full green bar and you got a breakout of value. So I did go ahead and start a swing trade in this. And this is this is as easy as it gets. Uh, for me, you know, as long as there's nothing major that happens in the name. And then you basically set your stop to what was your prior resistance. What what was prior resistance is now support. So my so my stop will be 55. Because again, I always like. I think we get a, the. I think everybody gets the question. Oh, what do you? Where do you think this thing's going to go? I have no idea where this is going to go. I know there's a lot of call buying in the name, and I know the name's breaking out of value. So let's give it a chance. Let's give it a chance to see if it breaks out. That's all about. You know, that that's what trading is about. Not crystal ball trying to figure out. Um, oh, this thing. It's good. It's definitely going to go higher. Now, I have no idea what this thing is going to do. All I know is I'm defining my risk. I've taken profits in a, in a trade, and now I'm messing with the profits a little bit, and I've converted it from options to stock um, because I, I don't want that volatility, especially tomorrow. Right? So there's little things that you could do. There's little adjustments that you could do, even though we've got a little bit of, a, of event risk for tomorrow. And if this, this thing drops back into, in, back into value, then I don't want to deal with it. Um, service now is a good example. Again, I like to go over some of the trades that, you know, sometimes they look great and then they kind of, you know, they, they, um, they lose the momentum. So here is, here's a good example too. Like service now looked great around 12 o'clock, hit a, hit a high of 398 and it didn't close there. So you see how you get much more information. So I, I was playing service now right from the start. Um, this was also one of our weekend watch list names. It may still work. But I don't like that candle, um, you know. So I hit one target here um, after we saw the momentum in Coop. By the way, nice pre-market trade. You know, this is one of those things too where I listened to the conference call. Coop Software sold off for who knows why, because I listened to the conference call and it was really nice. Usually, when you get to the Q and A of the of the analyst call, and all the analysts are saying congratulations on your quarter, that's not necessarily, you know, and the stock is down there's that's usually a pretty good sign right when when all of them are saying hey great job on your quarter congratulations and the stock's down five percent or whatever those are the ones that you usually want to like buy the dip on not when there's a big problem right like work slack had a had you know they missed their number they missed the, you know the analyst number and you could see it hasn't done anything so it's a different story between sometimes a name sells off and it's a head scratcher and then you go ahead and you listen to the conference call and it's like, wow, they had a great quarter. Now, this thing didn't close on the highs either, but this thing was trading at, you know, I thought it was worth a shot this morning. This thing was trading at like 211 this morning. So I had taken this thing. So again, like, and, and, the, and all along the value areas give us, um, let us know where to be taking targets. So where did I take my target? In Koopa Software, I took one target because of, you know it moved really quickly. 
at 224. And then I got out of it at, you know, out of Coop. Again, not being super greedy. 230, top of value, right? So the, so the market webs give us that roadmap. And look at this thing. It could not get out of value. Because I have no problem. If this thing closes and it takes out last week's highs, then we've got a different situation on our hands. But for now, that was a beautiful scalp, right? And then I can... Um, you know, if it if it closes around the highs, you know, then it might do something like Zscaler did, right? Which went nuts for a couple days, right? So completely different story. So you have to keep adjusting to how the market is changing and 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 what the market is giving you, and and really like you know for us, what the market webs are telling us, and Coupa Software that one hour valuary was perfect, right? Got out, got out with really nice profits. Uh, and again, it's all a little bit, it helps you kind of control your greed, right? Because it did hit 237. I could have gotten out a little bit higher, but that's fine. Uh, so what else for today? Uh, I could talk a little bit more about today's option activity. You know, I was making a joke yesterday saying that basically every name, every stock out there saw call activity. I mean, the put call ratio I, is probably still very low you know, indicating complacency, still 0.49. So uh, a couple other tidbits I will go into a little bit. Oh, Lamb Research was, was one. Now, this is one that we've seen not just today, but call buying, like repetitive call buying in a name. So this one I held on to. Although I, I think, so again, like the semiconductors have been doing very well for me the last couple of weeks, knock on wood. Just seeing a lot of opportunities here. I would like to see that 322 VPOC get taken out. Um, last week I traded Xilinx and I traded uh, Texas Instruments, but I've really been kind of juggling them back and forth. Yeah, 329 is where this thing could get to. There's a one hour VPOC. What level did I say on the daily for Lime Research? 322. So we've got multiple areas of resistance. So 322, 329. So again, that would be a nice little swing trade. So I took a target in this thing and that makes me feel so much better. Right. And, and um, one of the concepts that I was going over the other day was that sometimes I'll get into a trade. It looks good in the beginning of the day. But you just don't know how it's going to finish. So I get the question a lot too. Hey, is this a day trade or is this a swing trade? Well, if it works out, it's going to be a swing trade uh, because I want more than just what a day trade is providing me. I want to see bigger moves. As we know, the majority of the moves that are that happen over time are in the after hours market, not during the cash session. So if I can somehow um, take a target in a name for profits and then leave the rest on to get the, the chunkier uh, move, then, you know, that's that's the whole goal. But if a name, you know, fizzles and the chart looks like ServiceNow, then even though it, I was thinking about ServiceNow being a swing trade, notice it's back in value, then it just turns out to be a day trade. But I'm always looking, I, I always want to have more profits than less, right? So, and more profits come with swing trading uh, than they do with day trading, in my opinion. But you do know that that's a fact, that the overnight moves are bigger than the intraday moves. Um, there's been various studies about that. Um, what else did I hear? I, I like to kind of, to you know, when I see, when I hear something uh, on the market that, you know, on financial media, financial media that I think is kind of interesting, there was, a, there was an analyst on CNBC today saying, no, I'm not really adding any risk here. Uh, what I would really like to see is a 10 to 15% pullback in the market. And then what I'll do is I'll add risk. So let's think about that for a second. Everybody always says that, they, oh, if I could get a dip, I would, I'll add risk. If there is a 10 to 15% pullback, it, that doesn't just magically happen. Uh, there, there will be some major bad news that hits the tape. And, and that's why a 10 to 15% pullback will happen. And at that time, everyone's going to be like, oh, geez, I don't know if I want to add to this. There's this type of, you know, there's this XYZ news that's on the tape. Oh, geez. So it's a, it's a whole different mindset. So when you hear something like that, 
it's basically garbage because the, it's not just going to be, oh, the market's just coming down because, you know, for no reason at all. It's going to be a scary situation while there's, when there's a 10% pullback, just like this, right? Did, every, did, did people want to buy? He, did a lot of people want to buy here? It wasn't easy. You know, I did, I added to some long-term things, you know, even before we, we completely bottomed out because I thought, and I got ridiculed on, on Twitter for that. Oh, we're going much lower. But I'll tell you, after this move, which people have been probably dying for pullbacks, nobody wanted to buy this psychologically, right? It was difficult to buy that. So don't come on and say that, oh, I, I want a 10% pullback and blah, blah, blah. Then I'll add my risk. It'll be so easy. That's that's false. That that never happens. So it's good to kind of like so I'm giving you this point, which is a little bit out of the context of what we normally talk about in the in the um, end of day video. But just you know, when you listen to people, they they really have no idea what they're talking about because that person is what on a ten or fifteen percent pullback on significant news. Like let's say the the country would fall back into the virus if that for a 10 to 15% pullback that's what would be going on for us to to come back and at that time this person who's on CNBC is going to be running for the hills they're not going to be adding risk so <laughs> Just to put things in context. So um, so we talked about a lot. I didn't mention value versus growth. Um, I think that this comes in waves. The question, right, we saw a lot of those thing, those um, names that went up for three or four days. Uh, kind of there was profit taking. Um, you could see this small cap versus, versus large, uh, sorry, small cap growth versus value. Uh, here I've got value in the numerator. This took a little bit of a breather. And if you look even at the large caps too, you know, IWD, which is large cap value was down 2% for the day. And IWF was positive for the day. So that's a big change. That's a 2% difference today. Uh, growth outperformed value. And if you look at some of these things, you know, I've talked about this before, but in my opinion, a lot of these value trades, like the airlines, right? Uh, you know, the airlines made a massive rally and, and a huge short squeeze of a rally, but the airlines are not an easy trade. So you have to think about things, you know, there was call buying in Macy's, for example. Macy's finished down 7% today. Now, again, it, closed, it opened on the highs and closed on the lows, but these names, in my opinion, a lot of these names, especially that are in downtrends, they are trades. They're not investments for me. Why? Because Macy's is not, it wasn't having a awesome of a time before the coronavirus. So, so why, why even go there and try to play some of this stuff that has a very troubled business? Um, yes, they, they, all these things bounced from the lows, but you know, what else are you looking for? Do you think Macy's is going to be a leader in retail going forward? Or do you just think it was bouncing? So just something for you to kind of think about it because I see this a lot right now. Um, again, I view all these trades that are in big downtrends as like renting. You know, you're basically renting a trade. You're, you know, you're not or a stock for a couple of days. You know, we can look at a couple of these airlines. Um, American Airlines hit the 200-day moving average, down from 22 bucks down to 18. You know, maybe this now consolidates a little bit. Um, Boeing was down 6% for the day. Um, lost a little bit of that upside momentum to it. But, you know, if we go through some of the FANG stocks, Facebook was another name that we had for the watch list. Uh, the Tribeca Trade Group member watch list that we send out on Sundays. Um, really nice move here, almost a full green bar. Amazon, which I remain long in the tactical portfolio, out to high, out to 52 week highs. All right, so I would rather stick with names that are positioned going forward. You know, like forget about where the stock price is. What would you rather own, Amazon or Macy's? Which, which one has better growth prospects? not looking at the stock price. In my opinion, it's going to be Amazon. They're the ones who are basically, they've got the right system down. Um, they are the leader. Everybody's playing catch up to them. Um, I like to stick with strength. 
I don't think Macy's is going to catch Amazon. So anyway, that's um, that's my opinion. Uh, what else? Was there anything else I wanted to cover for today's video? Uh, the semis, like we already talked about, had nice strength. Home builders. Um, biotech was also, uh, I don't know if biotech finished in the green. Maybe it did not. But remember, like we saw a lot of, you know, we saw big inflows going into healthcare and biotech for about like six to seven straight weeks. And, you know, they've been seeing some profit taking, right? So it kind of goes back to what I'm thinking for tomorrow's Fed meeting is that I would not be surprised if there's some, if there is some profit taking. Now, let's say, last scenario, this is, this is where I wanted to end it. Let's say that there is some profit take, more profit taking, right, in the next couple of days. That will probably lead up to some type of buying opportunity as long as Powell doesn't radically change his view of the balance sheet and the stimulus. If he basically comes out with the best thing possible and just says, hey, we'll see how it goes, um, then you know any dip will probably be bought in, in high growth names is my thought. So I'll give you, that's my little prediction for tomorrow. Um, again, and, and I will be going into this Fed meeting pretty light and nimble so I can, so I can uh, pick up on, on any opportunities. I'll have some trades on, right? I'll have the AMD on that I discussed and my residual Microsoft position on and a couple other names, but I will be ready to strike um, based on, you know, if this market gives me an opportunity, not just tomorrow, but the, but the whole week. And that's the whole name of the game. You know, you, you, you seize the opportunities as they're coming, you know, rather than be caught off guard when there's a headline. All right, guys, have a great night. See you tomorrow.